Hello and welcome back to the Whatnots Reactor Core. My name is Kyle Springer. I am joined by Melissa Wilkinson. Melissa, how are you? Hi. I'm doing okay. How is Thursday night for Kyle? Thursday night is okay. I am a little congested right now, which never feels mm. great. I'm sick for a second time in like so many weeks. I This is ridiculous. You guys don't care about all of that because we're here to talk about Echo, Marvel's <clears throat> latest mini series, uh, which put out all five episodes all at once. Not something they've done in a while like mm. that, where it's like, here's the entire thing. Um, they've been experimenting lately between this and one episode of What If releasing every consecutive day. Yeah, they certainly have. Um yeah, I, something about this just kind of felt like the older, like, Marvel Netflix shows. It was probably because mm -hmm. they dropped all the episodes at once, too. They were just like, here you go. Have fun. Um, but yeah, we're here to talk about Marvel's Echo. So, Melissa, last time we saw her was back in Hawkeye. Um, what I, I guess, what was your excitement level? Where were you on this? Was this a, a show you were looking forward to or one you were just like, I mean, I'll, I'll check it out. It'll see. I, I honestly was a little bit more on the I'll check it out front until okay. I saw that first trailer. Uh, th this was a show that just looked like it might be quite serious. Uh, sure. Yeah. And so sometimes I come to the MCU for fun. <laughs> Sincerely. <laughs> Like, I don't think Echo is really going to make me laugh. Not that that's the explicit purpose of everything. Right. But I'm like, yeah. there's never a Marvel thing I haven't watched, so I will watch it. And that first trailer dropped and I thought it looked really cool. I thought it looked like they did a lot of great work with the action. Yep. And they did. I really enjoyed Echo. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, I, I was uh, just not... <sighs> not concerned that's not the right word i just didn't know what to expect because it's not really mm -hmm. a character that i know much about and even in hawkeye she doesn't have that much screen time uh, she the, mm -hmm. there is kind of that central mystery i guess a little bit spoilers for H H hawkeye of like who is this big large lo looming figure in her life here it's kingpin um All right it, and like that stuff was fun, but we just didn't know much about her. So they were like, we're making a whole show about her. And I was just like, I mean, she was really cool, but really like that's who you're going to do next. Uh, and I have to say, I'm I, I think I'm glad that they did. did, did. I, mm -hmm. I, I think overall, this show was pretty successful uh, in what they were trying to do. Um, and yeah, I, I enjoy, enjoyed it for the most part. I, I don't think it's without its problems, um, but I, I, I think overall was largely successful. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. And welcome back, Kingpin, like for real, for real, not just like <laughs> that's kind of Kingpin in the Hawkeye yeah. show. It's like that's Kingpin. Yeah, <laughs> it, this is recognizably Kingpin. He's Indeed. here quite a bit. Indeed. Um. So, yeah, uh, some interesting stuff. I, I guess I live out here in Oklahoma, uh, where the show is supposedly set, though I know they did most of the filming out in Georgia. Um, so not actually just the case here. for most things. Yeah, that or like I... <laughs> Van Vancouver or something. Uh -huh. Right. Um, but I yeah, they uh, I know after looking up some stuff about the show, uh, this is what I, I liked that they did about this show is that they actually went to the Choctaw Nation mm -hmm. and asked their permission, could, like, hey, can we portray you in, in, in this? And can we start a dialogue about how best to do that? Um, whereas I, I don't feel like that necessarily happens a lot, especially with uh, smaller marginalized communities right it's usually just like so here's the story uh we hope you like it uh and not like hey is is this okay if we use your nation for for this mm -hmm. um so I, I i thought that stuff w was neat uh right near my house in uh, here in oklahoma uh is the first americans museum 
I was hoping to get to go to the museum before we got to record uh, th- 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 this episode. Uh, I did not get to. I I was thinking they might maybe have something on e- Echo in there. I don't think they do. Um, mm. But it, it was still just like I, I would it'd be neat to go and check it yeah. out beforehand. Um, but uh, they're closed on Tuesdays. So I <laughs> that was the one day this week that I could have gone and uh, it didn't work out. So here we are. Clearly, you're not a museum fan. I feel like a lot of them are closed on Tuesdays. Really? I, like, yeah, I, I guess I was just like, huh, Tuesday. OK, sure. Well, so, so the, <laughs> wow. So the folks have the long weekend. I'm going to take a three day weekend and deeply explore this museum. They want that business. So Tuesday's the day they take off. I guess. I guess. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 I think my first gripe with this show is really just that I, I feel like it got off to a little bit of a slow start. Um, I think they this show is really trying to do a lot of emotional work, a lot of character stuff, uh, e- even kind of retreading some ground with Kingpin. Um, mm. and, and like it's it's successful at that, but. I kind of wanted maybe a little more action than what we got. Um, but I was also very happy with what we did get. Um, yes. Th- that one fight scene where Daredevil sh- sh- shows up is incredible. Um, man, I, I, like e- even the, the, the scene of her jumping off the train is just a lot of yeah. fun. <laughs> fun. Um, but I, I like I, all yeah, the different set pieces. More. Yeah. I like the train. I like the skating rink. That's a wonderful set. That was cool. I yeah. think I've said in every one of these reactor core episodes we've done for any MCU show, whoever that team is at Marvel studios that goes out and does set location, location scouting, always great. <laughs> even if yeah. I'm not, even Top if it's not- a show I'm not super into, like if I watch secret invasion, it's definitely not my favorite. But Nick Fury's house is very nice. Yeah. And they never fail at that. They always find someplace cool to put the action. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Um, I I also think just, I, just it's incredible how g- 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 good a Lockwood Cox uh, yes. it is. Uh, and this basically being her second acting role, r- r- um, she, I don't think, had acted before Hawkeye. Uh, huh. and yeah she had like just doing some incredible st- st- stuff here um I, I i like i said i think they were doing a lot of emotional work and i think she can k- 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 carry that um it's it, it's interesting I, I i think i've seen a few other movies or shows kind of throughout the years with a character that used sign language Mm -hmm. but they were never like the main character or anything like that uh but i think even to to act using that language it's a very physical language right Mm -hmm. um and so yeah she just she can take that emotion and i think makes it really shine uh, with her performance. What did you think of her? I really enjoyed her. I think she's excellently cast. And when we see young Maya, I was yeah. really struck by how much that young performer looks like a Lockwa Cox. And then I watched one of the new rock stars breakdowns. They're like, yep, that's one of her cousins. So <laughs> Amazing. Wonderful. <laughs> I love a family connection like that. I also love the magic of just finding a random unrelated kid that looks like the person you're casting. Yeah. All are wonderful. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, So, yeah, obviously, we also get a lot of Kingpin in this. Melissa, Mm -hmm. tell me your thoughts on Kingpin and his story here. How did how did you feel about him? He's so large. Indeed. (laughs) I. (laughs) <laughs> like even when and you done. see <laughs> when you see him back in Hawkeye, like they take the some of the footage from Hawkeye to include in this show. Mm-hmm. He's even bigger, and it's just a a great triumph of how they stage and block and like you know costume design. He's got the big boxy suits, how he's framed. 
I think they do a great job with really, in addition to Vincent D'Onofrio's performance, making this guy feel so huge, so imposing. Yeah. Uh, so it's even more striking when he's vulnerable, like at the end, not to mm, skip yeah. ahead to the end. But I do always appreciate a story where the hero looks at the villain and knows that they must change their life and decides not to do that by ending their life, by killing the villain, but saying, what can I do to put you on a better path? Because you're a problem. I don't want you to be a problem anymore. Can I change something in your life that'll have a positive effect on you and then therefore on everybody else? So when he gets... Not healed at the end. I mean, Maya is using her sort of mother's healing we'll spirit to do it. On that, and we'll return I, to that in a sec. Yeah, I like she, healing power is what she's using, but I think what happens to him, uh, he's so troubled. I don't think that would constitute a full healing, but it's done yeah, something no. to him. He's definitely still going to be a villain. I yeah, just, but I, I I I appreciate when a villain is left alive to hopefully learn to be better instead of just dying or (laughs) being shoved off to live on the raft prison for a long time until we need them for secret wars or something yeah yeah um yeah his performance as usual is just outstanding as kingpin um just incredible stuff one of the best marvel castings period um Mm. just incredible stuff uh it it it's interesting to me because it never there it felt like there was very little that was new like new information about kingpin that was really given um Mm -hmm. there's a few scenes obviously we haven't seen um with 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 the the younger version of maya that was not in hawkeye um and that that was neat but once we do get into the later episodes and he is kind of revealing more of his own backstory, which is all stuff that we learned from the Marvel uh, dare J J J J devil Netflix uh, st- stuff. Um, that stuff was not new, but it's still like, man, I just, I, I had such a great time with those Netflix shows that I didn't, feel like it was like um i i roll i've seen all of this i know what this is like it still felt mm-hmm. new in a certain way um and then again more closer to the end when he gives maya that gift and it's the hammer just like immediately just like like i feel like because i had watched that show i knew the emotional weight that that thing mm. had that the significance that that thing had had um and it it felt powerful it felt strong it felt like the right kind of um like hey they put in the work to do all of this and here we are and it is paying off um and then yeah to get back to this end scene a little bit where uh maya is i guess healing him yeah she she ends up with these like healing powers by the end of that um i don't know yeah like that that is an interesting thing can can we skip ahead to the 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 end credit scene and just mix this yeah. all in in one big sure. thing here so so after kingpin gets the holy ghost or what have you uh in in him and he's he, he healed and he's born again um he is on a private jet and he's having a meeting or he, he, uh, I forget who he, he says, but he's talking to his assistant or whoever. Uh, and he says something along the lines of like, call the heads of the fa- families. We need to have a meeting. Um, and I thought that was an interesting, an, an interesting end credit scene because that's essentially what happens in one of the first scenes of the Netflix Daredevil show. He's having a meeting mm-hmm. with all the heads of the important like crime f- f- families um, as there is a power vacuum in the New York underworld right after uh, the events of Avengers 1. Um, and so I... I I was at first confused, but now uh, obviously I was like, oh, I get it. Their next show is Daredevil Born Again. 
it's kind of maybe a soft reboot without really yeah. like it's still right. in canon, but like it, right. Mm, so it's the yeah. I yeah I can see them even start like referencing some of the Netflix stuff in the like hey we'll have a similar scene here or we'll do something like that. Um, but then yeah I think he he will get an opportunity to kind of move on from the trauma that those other mm. seasons was about and then find something new in this next mayoral campaign that he yeah. seems to be wanting to dive into which is also what they did in the netflix stuff mm -hmm. um, so I, I i just thought that was interesting how it it it, it felt like it's come full circle but also yeah what did what did you think of this ending here because he's not healed per se no it, it doesn't seem like it i mean they're not suddenly gonna make kingpin a hero Right. But I think Maya did assist with giving him some sort of release, some sort of catharsis, some sort of distance. His pain is not so immediate and has such a sway over his actions. We may see a Wilson Fisk that's maybe slightly more, that isn't quite as rageful, maybe is a bit more thoughtful. I if the plot would be a mayoral election, that kind of conflict, I would like to see. I, I, I think the conflict is juicier if it's not like, well, clearly that's an entirely corrupt man. And it's more like, I'm suspicious of him. He seems shady, but he does have some good points. I have seen him do some kind things. He does care about these things for sure. I don't know. To have, to have him be uh, closer not all the way there, but closer to a healed positive person, I think could make that. Uh, I like the idea of that conflict being uh, the characters around him really being on the fence. With, I don't know how to read this guy. I don't know what to do about him. I don't know how to if I trust him instead of, oh, I definitely don't trust him. Yeah, that could be an interesting thing with Daredevil then being like, look, we've done this before. <laughs> and i i i know you're an evil person and, and he, he's like i'm not as bad as you think i am i've changed right um and maybe daredevil not accepting that because the the character mm. of daredevil always like he he is a catholic he has a lot of catholic guilt and stuff like that and one thing about christianity and catholicism is learning to forgive people yes um and that could that could that could very much be a challenge for matt um i'd love and, that yeah that sounds interesting I, I i don't think it's gonna be happy go lucky and that by the end they're best friends and they're <laughs> holding their hands <laughs> i'm gonna and all take that you stuff. out for ice cream i i still think they will fight a lot um but i i i think it's it's gonna be a lot of misunderstandings like why are you still pestering me like why won't you let me change why won't you let me show you that i i i have changed and stuff like that um who knows that's we'll intriguing we'll, yeah we'll that see. might be what this helps set up I, yeah we've talked enough about the kingpin corner of the story sure. let's go back and talk about uh the setting of Tomahaw, Oklahoma. I really enjoyed yeah. being in this small, specific, very rich feeling community where it feels like everybody knows each other and there's all the gossip. Mm -hmm. uh, and I loved Maya's extended family. This is a sort of family structure we haven't really seen before. Like it's she Hulk and Hulk are cousins, but that's really it. The, the MCU this has not been a story rich with cousins and uncles and yeah. grandmas. The families are a lot smaller and more immediate than that. Yeah. And I like that the characters we're spending time with is Maya, her dad's brother, her grandma on her mom's side and like two cousins over there and mm. her grandma's ex-boyfriend who feels like uh, he's everybody's grandfather and who you can still go to for help. I yeah. like that <laughs> yeah it it really does feel like a community um mm -hmm. they they all know each other they all have history um 
and they're still working through that that history i yes. I, I, I think is something that stood out to me i really really liked the scene uh when her grandma went back to that store and was like you know there was this one time i had this it, it, it was a sewing machine right mm. or, yeah she was like i had this sewing machine it looked like this i was hoping maybe you could find something similar or hopefully hopefully you have something and he comes out with the exact one he's like i've kept it this entire t- <laughs> time um and I, I just thought that that scene in particular was real special um mm-hmm. that there, there i there love is those just, two together yeah there is this connection there is this history and characters feel certain types of way about each other even if their words have said one thing or their actions have said something mm-hmm. else, um, they they are still looking out for each other. Um, yeah. And I like that everybody has a different reaction to when Maya comes back in town. Like her cousin is angry that Maya didn't make the first move and reach out to her when she's been re- trying to reach out to Maya. Her grandma doesn't want to talk to her, but like... Biscuits it's, is entirely there. I love that she has yeah. a cousin named Biscuits. He's <laughs> as good as Biscuits are. Him and his dog, <laughs> Billy Jack. Yeah. <laughs> he shows up with like, Maya, what do you need? You want a Pop-Tarts? What flavor? Biscuits has got you. And then you can still go to grandma's old boyfriend, who's not literally your grandfather, but he's he is that grandfather energy. He's everybody's yeah. grandfather. You can go to Scully and ask him for help. I love the montage where he makes Maya a new leg out of mm. just stuff he has in his workshop. Yeah. We, you have your Tony Starks, you who can build a, an Iron Man suit in a cave with a box of scraps. But I like that you have the more down to earth version of that with Scully building the leg. Like, oh, my dad could do that. <laughs> Everybody knows somebody who's like that level of a genius where they can just sort of cobble a workshop together to make one everyday item. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Um, Yeah. I, I really wish we got to spend more time with that community. Mm -hmm. That was also one of the things that I ended up feeling was kind of a dead downer with this show is that five episodes is very short and i think they did some phenomenal work with what they had but i i really wished i could have gotten to know some of those characters better um yeah and i i I think with and i'm not even asking for much more in there but six episodes seven episodes total Mm -hmm. I, i i i think would have given us more time to spend in that community um, with that culture and i feel like they could have maybe introduced some of the stakes a little bit sooner um mm-hmm. I, I i thought that last episode the the finale which really was the finale it w- w- was super action-packed but also the four episodes preceding it were kind of slower in mm. comparison and mm. so it's just like all of a sudden here it is the end yeah um and so, yeah, if they just had a little bit more time to sit with that community and build up the, 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 those mm-hmm. stakes, I I think this show really could have been incredible. Um, yeah. But and I, I still enjoyed it a lot. So good stuff. I, I hope we see I her know more we'll down see, the road. Yeah, that's the thing is I know we'll see Echo again, but it will probably be her in New York City. I don't know when we would get back to ha- Tomaha, Oklahoma again. If there's Where not does Clint live? really, I Where was he? It, it said that I'd said his farm is in Missouri, so he's driving distance. Maybe Star Lord goes on a midwestern road trip with his grandpa, and they yeah, go they through all have Tomaha, to like carpool. Oklahoma. It's 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 Hawkeye, Star Lord, and Echo in a car. In they a all have to go trip. somewhere. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Let's go to the Midwest. I, but. You know, that's not I don't imagine any of those are going to be the sites where action truly goes down. It's like you're in New York. Yeah. I, I think there's I don't know if there's an Iron Man, uh, if there's a Stark Industries left in L.A. Although we do have stuff like, uh, I don't know, Wonder Man set out there. I This yeah. is just not one of the hubs 
where I can imagine further stories happening that would bring characters from other movies and shows here. So I'm like, we'll see Maya again for sure, but when are we going to see her, her grandma or biscuits? When, when yeah. will they come in? Unless they go to New York with her on vacation, yeah. they might be kind of left out. But then again, I think the MCU... It was a very pleasant surprise, not just that Kamala Khan's family was in the Marvels, but that they were really in the Marvels. They're in yeah. it a lot. I think uh, the Marvel team recognized how much people loved that family and did want to give us more of them. So maybe they'll listen to how much people love Echo's family. <laughs> we will get to see more of them down the road. Put Bonnie into action. Yeah. Um and again, who who knows if Marvel is now trying to weave together more of the pieces of their other shows. But after the fallout of Secret Invasion uh, and stuff and, and them just not necessarily trusting aliens as much, I wonder what's going to mm. happen with new Asgard. Uh, and Asgard in the comics also has a history of being uh, of floating oh, ab right. above a town in Oklahoma. So yeah. I mean, it, like there there is some some stuff that they could kind of weave in and out. The who knows, uh, but yeah, it's just some some interesting stuff. I'm excited to see what they do next with her, though, um, especially because. The, they the, even though the character was introduced as a villain in Hawkeye, she is on a road to redemption. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I think she's certainly gotten there by the end of this show, but we'll really get to see her uh, more so as a hero in whatever next version we see her in. Um, and I'm excited for that. So mm -hmm. I think that'll be good. Good journey. Good emotional yeah. journey here with this one. Uh, do you have any other kind of thoughts? Anything else you want to shout out about Echo? I don't think so. <laughs> I will say I'd it say worked okay. out conveniently that this one was dropped all at once when it was. Because uh, I was stuck inside all weekend because of the cold. Yes. Yeah, it didn't yeah. snow here. It it like it snowed slightly. That wasn't the problem. There was just like a wind chill of negative fifteen degrees. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I and I I feel like of of all the times to drop an entire show at once, January was a good well. time to test that out. Because I imagine many folks were in that situation of I'm home the whole weekend. <laughs> I have plenty of time for Echo. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, cool. Well, I guess that is our reactions to Marvel's Echo. Uh, we hope you enjoyed uh, both the show and our show here. Uh, Melissa, where can the people find you on the internet? Internet. Uh, uh, <laughs> I feel like I always look nervous when you ask me this. Just I have a letterbox <laughs> that I have not used much, but would like to use more in the future at some point. That's at Wilkie Wit, W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. There you go. Uh, you guys can follow me at Yo Kyle Springer. Uh, and if you want to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we are up to here at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots official on th on th threads. Uh, so please go like, share and subscribe. That would help us out a ton. Go check out some more of our videos right over there on that side of the screen. Uh, and yeah, this has been number 135 of the Whatnots Reactor Core. We will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.